you agree? I ain't saying that I'm better than anyone. But who better than me? Greetings and salutations, people. Welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to a new series that I'm going to officially call The Fem Files. This will be the first installment of that. And look, it's not about trying to bust people on, you know, sort of some unknown prospect that you've probably never heard of and never will um, or anything like that. It's literally me giving my take on some of the women that I like watching. And on occasion, it might be some that I feel are going to do big things moving forward. Or maybe there will be a couple of un unearthed gems like here and there. But yeah, this isn't uh, going to be like a huge deep dive into people's backstories and careers. From time to time, obviously, there might be, you know, a little bit of uh, history that some people might not know about a certain fighter. But yeah, generally speaking, I just wanna, I'm going to talk about some of maybe the styles, the way some people fight. A bit about their history here and there but let's see how we go let's see if you know it's enjoyable content for the masses um but ultimately look i want to see the women's game evolve i want to see it keep going from strength to strength so if any little thing i can do to maybe spread awareness of a couple people i'm all for it with that being said let me get into the first person I want to address today. So since you made a pro debut last week on the Chocolatito Martinez card, I guess it's only right I'll probably start this series off talking about Sky Nicholson. Now, um, first things first, Sky Australian. However, due to um, also having Scottish heritage, she's got dual citizenship. So she's over here currently training i believe it's with mark tibbs um so yeah she's based out in the uk which is it's funny because based in the uk but had a pro debut in america she's from australia so clearly um she's going to be someone on multiple time zones she'll be fighting you know pretty much around the world i know that um matchroom and the zone are looking to do that australian rollout at some point I'm pretty sure that she will be quite heavily f featured within sort of that setup as well. But yeah, I mean, it's good getting all those international flavors. Uh, so first things first, obviously, she was a 2020 Olympian. Um, she just missed out on the 2016 uh, Rio Games. Um, I can't remember the exact reason for that, but there was a qualification. I don't think she, she made it through the, the qualifiers for that. But when you look at the style that she exhibits, I was watching, I was watching it and I thought, okay, how is she going to be different from the, from the amateur games? And I looked at her and the first thing that I thought of was she, she reminded me a lot of Savannah Marshall, like without necessarily the punch power. Now I'm not saying that she doesn't have it, but she just didn't display it. So I'm, I don't know, but just the way that she sort of moved like being sort of very languid and and sort of loose staying on the outside like popping that jab out i thought to myself okay this is kind of how sort of savannah sets up a lot of her work um i mean there's also i guess a bit of old school billy joe saunders in there as well because he sort of use that same kind of style especially like hands down you know popping that jab make you know making sure the feet are quick enough that you can always sort of get in and out of range without essentially taking too much you know too much coming back to you but yeah it was just a, it was a very sort of fluid and lucid motion so to me like i said it kind of gave off the it gave off the vibe of um yeah like a, a, a savannah marshall uh, a sort of a, a Billy Joe Saunders, sort of very, very sort of loose and languid. Um, not maybe not showing a lot of the quote unquote fundamentals at this point, but it was effective. I mean, you know, and she came, she came in against a three and zero opponent, so it's not like you know they gave her someone with you know like some upside down record, one win and twelve losses or something. So on the debut, like. 
I thought she done really well. Um, I'm looking forward to sort of the next time she's going to be out. Um, you know, 26, where is she going to be? 27 in, in August, the end of August. Like, so she's got plenty of time on her side. She's got a fairly deep amateur pedigree. So, yeah, I mean, also, I guess a, a quick take on, on something people may not know. Like, she had two brothers, uh, Jamie and Gavin, who uh, both tragically passed away, sort of, uh, I think it was like 1994. And, but Jamie was like held as sort of one of the uh, greatest boxers in Australian history. Um, you know, sort of, he won a lot of amateur championships for Australia. So she comes from deep stock, she comes from a, a deep pedigree. Um, so, with that being said, like, like I said, it's not going to be too long. I just wanted to sort of give my takes on some people that are sort of on their way up. And I'm definitely looking forward to the journey. There's a few other, um, I've heard some some things about who her next opponent could be um, and that she will likely be out again sort of around May time. If that's the case, I mean, look, that's a good turnaround. Um, if she can get active this year, sort of maybe have four fights, four or five, you know, especially if they're not, if they're going to be sort of, you know, six, six rounders. Uh, in this first year I reckon that after the next fight maybe the fight after that she'll probably jump up to eight rounders and by the middle of next year at the latest I can probably see her challenging for a title in and around the weight classes that she's at so fun fact uh, back in 2016 um, Sky Nicholson was actually competing at the sort of welterweight and the light welterweight limits for that sort of the real games but clearly i guess a lot of those girls were naturally a bit too big so she came down uh closer to sort of featherweight so that's where she's competing at the moment sort of around that 126 mark um i mean she could probably end up down as lower super bantamweight um maybe even go up to super feather like she's pretty much going to be in between that cat that sort of uh that that scope moving forward i feel like those would be sort of best weights for her and it will play to her advantages of being you know quite tall um you know i think she's like five eight so you know quite tall um quite long arms decent uh you know sort of decent range uh you know decent wingspan i feel like i feel like those that will sort of suit her dimensions a lot better than sort of going up to like lightweight and sort of going back up to super lightweight and those areas there but yeah um i just wanted to like i said have a have a quick sort of breakdown of the fight with uh juarez that she had over the weekend just a little bit about her backstory and yeah ultimately i'm looking forward to uh what she does moving forward so since I spoke about a woman that was on the card last week, I figured it's probably only right I speak about another woman that's coming up on the card this week. That woman going to be Sandy Ryan. Now, some of you probably heard me speak about sort of my thoughts on Sandy uh, previously, but for anyone who doesn't know sort of what I think about Sandy, I actually rate her very highly. Um, in terms of her style, I feel like she is very well suited for the pro game. Um, she actually did quite well in the amateurs. Um, in the Worlds in 2014, she got a silver medal at, I believe it was light welterweight, so 140. Um, in the 2016 games, was it 2016? Yeah, 2016, she got a bronze in the lightweight category. And in the 2018 Commonwealth Games, she got a gold medal in nose at, I believe it was welter or light welter. It's one of the two. So, so one of those in there is, is one of them is welter, one's lightweight, and then one is light welter. But the Commonwealth Games, I think, was a, was a light welter she got. Um, 
she got the uh, the gold medal. So, you know, she was on course to sort of, you know, go through the Olympics, but didn't quite get through the qualifiers. So ultimately, uh, she went out in sort of, I think it was the, the round of 32. Very close split decision. I remember watching that fight. It was one of those, it could have went either way. So it was a bit unlucky. But turned pro instantly, uh, instantly got snapped up by a matchroom. Um, I guess Eddie saw the potential and yeah, her style does translate very well to the pros. Um, she has a bit, she has a bit of a, to me, like a very sort of introvert character in front of camera, but I've seen sort of behind the scenes type footage of her, um, due to sort of matchroom events, due to some social medias and, and even due to, um, the great work from October Red Boxing, um, sort of you can kind of get her when her guard's down a little bit and she's a lot more comfortable sort of when it's not necessarily go time in front of the camera and she's got to, I guess, maybe think about what she has to say and not wanting to come across as a certain way, um, you know, for the audience. But no, very good character, especially on, on social media, like, her personality shines a lot more in text than it probably does like visually, which is a unique quality as well. I guess, especially in this digital age where, you know, we are on our phones a bit more than, you know, and we're having to make, make up our own minds and our own pictures of things. But she's trained by Clifton Mitchell uh, from Derby. I'm not sure where she actually trains though, in terms of a, in terms of a setup. I'll find that out. Um, but I know that she obviously she is trained with Clifton. Um, he rates her very highly. Um, her favorite, uh, I see her, she regularly spars with men more than women in the gym. I've seen a lot of that work. Um, she also practices um, yoga as well. I don't know if that's just for sort of self healing or if it's just sort of another way to sort of stay loose and languid and, and you know, sort of free and injury free. But the record's good. Um, she's very much on the body attack. So, I mean, Dillian White had the, had the name the body snatcher. I'm surprised she hasn't made that her moniker because her favorite punches are all body punches like when you look at her when she's got someone hurt in a fight she doesn't go head hunting like most people do it's almost like she goes body hunting I, I guess it's a great tactic in the sense that the body is the one thing that can't really move like you might be if you've got quick enough feet you might be able to get out of the way of some shots you might be able to crouch down tuck your elbows in and maybe just sort of deflect and some shots away but ultimately like the body's a stationary target so if someone's hurt or if they've got good sort of lateral movement they can probably keep their head off the line keep their head sort of on a pendulum and you it will be a lot harder for you to attack whereas the body's always there and i guess that's her philosophy is like your head might move but your body can't that's where i'm going and the way she digs in those left hooks is, is it's a great thing to watch. She's very spiteful. And I respect it because her whole moniker as well, like at the end of the day, this person's coming in to number one, take everything that I've got, take everything that I've worked hard for. And they also come in to hurt me. Like I have to hurt them first. Like I have to win this because if I don't win this, like it derails my career and it could potentially jeopardize my life. And I respect that. So, yeah, she's uh, she's going to be fighting Erica Farias um, on the undercard of Wood Conlon. And I, I'm going to be in attendance. I, I need to find out where that fight is going to be taking place on the card because I may not be at the event for the entire thing. I do want to see I do want to see the fight live. But, you know, I guess that might also depend on what the man them's doing at the time as well. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Um, ultimately, uh, she's coming up uh, this weekend, so that's what the 12th of March. I'm looking forward to it, and yeah, I'll report back on her maybe on another another regular episode. But I wanted to yeah just give her a bit of a shout out for this um, you know for this very first episode of the Fem Files. Okay, so last but not least for this episode, 
I thought it was only fitting to finish it off with my Capricorn sister, Raven Chapman. Now, Raven, 2-0, oh, um, one knockout, 50% ratio, same as Travis J. So, as he would say, half the women that have been in the ring with her left on their back. Nice, nice, I respect that. But no, um, Raven for me is an interesting one because her style is brilliant for the pro game. She's a very um, aggressive, come forward fighter, but she doesn't sort of just come forward in straight lines, like with with no upper body movement whatsoever. Basically, she's like a she's like a, a front foot stalker. So she she comes, she'll come forward, slightly crouched, angled angled shoulders, so that she's not standing square on. She's good at trapping opponents so if an opponent is sort of trying to back off she's very good at stepping into their you know sort of within their range blocking blocking exits while she's doing that she'll be pro like she'll basically be throwing out hard jabs and hard hooks to try and get them to get them tied to the body that's something that i've noticed quite a bit like she'll she'll aim for the body and then she'll swing the hooks up towards the head right at the end of the combination so once a person's like put their hands down enough that they're sort of protecting this area now she'll swarm to the head and it's all like constant pressure she she's got a great gas tank very rarely does she sort of let up and reset and give someone some time to think and plan what they're going to do next she she's very good at making fighters just have to react as opposed to being cerebral which makes them in turn i'm not going to say gas out but they'll lose energy and they lose the game plan quite quickly because it's applied pressure it's applied pressure it's applied pressure you don't get a chance to to really you know reset rethink and and make adjustments and that's one thing i, I quite like about uh about Raven she's very much uh, like we're, we're gonna have a battle of attrition and I'm going to win but it's not just attrition without skill like there is skill that if you look at the way she moves the little subtle movements that she makes while she's you know sort of while she's fighting even to the point sometimes when she will when she will throw the jab out there it's all done to basically make the other person have to do something to stop a very bad situation being about to happen and ultimately that is what then overwhelms the opponent to the point that they do just not submit in the sense that oh like they give up because it's not that case but yeah that what their game plan goes out the window so then it just becomes the raven show and that's one reason i do like um watching her fight very small sample size i'm not gonna act like i i, I knew everything about her prior to sort of her professional debut because i certainly didn't um but yeah generally speaking um the way she fights the way um is very sort of aesthetically pleasing to me as a hardcore and a casual fan um it will be interesting the fact that she has gone uh, sort of with Frank Warren and Queensbury being like the only woman over there at the moment. Um, my personal opinions on that aside, I do hope it does lead to a lot more women getting signed by Queensbury um, within her weight class. Obviously, so she's got some natural opponents as well as some of the other weight classes. Um, you know, we remember when it was Nicola Adams, like she was the only woman over there and, you know, they haven't had one since. So now they've got a woman there that can sort of, you know, flagship the flagship the promotion, hopefully can be like the catalyst for more women being um, being pushed to the forefront. And then we can have sort of three very hard competitive stables within the uh, yeah within the UK with boxer sort of with their emerging stable that they've got coming out obviously matchroom have probably got the the deepest roster of uh female fighters in mainstream boxing right now and then yeah queensbury hopefully they can um they can do and follow suit 
uh, they'll probably do it. They're tied with top rank right now, so one apiece. But yeah, we'll see sort of how that translates moving forward. And then maybe even get some of those, uh, get some of that working with like the Golden Boy promotions and some of their, some of their stables as well. Um, I've seen that Raven's been fighting sort of above the featherweight limit at super feather, um, normally coming in sort of like between 128, I think, uh, 128 to 129. But I do believe that she will be competing as a featherweight, like moving forward, at least for the foreseeable future. So there's uh, some decent champions down there. And ultimately that's where Amanda Serrano holds belts. So it will be interesting to see if that is the route that she will choose to go down in, you know, like a year or two's time. Um, I definitely think that within a year and a half, 18 months to two years, provided she is actually kept active and, and, is, and gets at least three fights a year for the next sort of two years, I reckon by, you know, sort of by early 2024, she should be compete, competing for world titles. I don't see why that wouldn't be the case. But yeah, that is um, sort of my quick takes on a couple of the females that are, in my opinion, ones to watch or ones to dominate moving forward. Like I said, volume one, there will be um, another volume coming soon. And I actually know, I'm going to put this in here, even though I'm, I'm not, I'll speak about her in a, a separate one. But obviously, a lot of people now have known about Alicia Baumgartner. Um, after what she did to Terry Harper last year. But I've got, well, I've been told, or at least I should say, yeah, I've, I've, I have the information that when she's going to be fighting next and who she's going to be fighting, but I'm not allowed to, I'm not allowed to speak on it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to put that there just so when it comes out, just no, like it's it's gonna be it's gonna be very pleasing. That's all I can say. Yeah, but, um, hopefully I can get the green light and I can put it in another video, sort of maybe a week or two from now. But yeah, just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I'm gonna shout out Alicia and another one. But yeah, so right now, like I said, if you um, wants to watch like Sky Nicholson, I liked how she did in uh, sort of in her debut, and I'm looking forward to more. Um, Sandy Ryan, again, like amazing little aggressive pocket rocket, loads of energy, loads of personality on social media. I feel like it's slowly going to be coming out during sort of, you know, as she gets a bit more comfortable in front of the cameras, but great to watch as a fighter, um, wrecking machine. And, I'll, you know, it's, it's what I like to see. And then Raven Chapman, uh, pure heart, pure aggression, smart aggression, um, pure attritional, um, attritional base fighter, you know, very, and you know, she's just refining those tools, refining those tools. And at the end of the day, like I said, it's cap, it's a Capricorn thing. So you know that she's never going to be in no boring fight. She's not going to retreat. She's always going to be ready for action. And she could be, like I said, the catalyst that Queensbury need moving forward. But that's it for the end of uh, the very first volume of the Femme Files. Hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe as always and I will catch you on the next one. Peace out.